All right, how's everybody doing today? Hotep, hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. It is Tuesday, May 31st, 2022, and we are live. So I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, writer, and historian. I've also taught entrepreneurship for seven years uh, as well and used to do business consulting also. So I, I was doing some research um, this weekend looking at um, information dealing with 80% uh, of African-American-owned businesses going out of business in the first 18 months. You know, uh, we we dealt with uh, at the peak of COVID and in 2020, we talked about 41% uh, of African-American-owned businesses going out of business um, as of April 2020. And, you know, I, I my degrees in business administration with a major in marketing uh, from Wayne State University. So this is the type of information I look at quite frequently so uh this past weekend I, I was doing some research on this topic and uh, i've also done a, a presentation over the past few years called 13 forms of wealth which also deals with entrepreneurship so i put together this uh presentation here here are 17 reasons why 80 percent of black owned businesses fail in the first 18 months don't make these mistakes don't make these mistakes okay and this is uh for me also having about 25 years of experience uh when it comes to sales and marketing and in management as well okay so here's a short uh presentation i put together also i'm going to let you know how you can advertise your black owned business with the African History Network as well. How you can advertise your black owned business with the African History Network and on the African History Network show. Okay, so if we look at this presentation I put together here, I'm gonna bring up the PowerPoint presentation. Everybody share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in, give us a thumbs up, give us a heart, give us a like. Okay, why 80% of black owned businesses fail in the first 18 months? Um, and you can also listen to my show, the African History Network show, Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the African History on, on the uh, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF here in Detroit. And we broadcast on my social media platforms, the African History Network on Facebook and Michael M. Hotep on YouTube. OK, so, uh, you know, I, I periodically look at business statistics. Uh, we know that uh, right now we see a surge in African-American-owned businesses being started because uh, many Af African-Americans are taking money that they got. Uh, from COVID and stimulus checks and things like this, starting businesses. But uh, if we look at this uh, piece of information here from CNBC.com, as well as NBC News from February 2021, uh, in, in February 2021, there were 30.2 million small businesses in the United States, 30.2 million small businesses in the United States, but only a fraction of them are going to survive. So what statistics tell us is that 20 percent of small businesses fail by the first by the first year that they're in business. 20 percent of small businesses fail by the first year that they are in business. 30 percent fail in the second year uh, that they are in business. And then we're going to see uh, a big drop as well uh, in the third year that they are in business. Um, and then the fifth year, by the fifth year, 50 percent. Of small businesses fail by the fifth year that they're in business by the 10th year 70 percent of small businesses fail okay but one of the most staggering statistics and i i heard uh this over the past few years probably past 10 20 years okay because i uh have been studying economic empowerment entrepreneurship entrepreneurship things like this since 1992 when i was in college 80 percent of African-American-owned businesses fail in the first 18 months. 80% of African-American-owned businesses fail in the first 18 months. So most of our businesses don't get to the full second year, don't get to the third year, okay? So this is why we really need to understand these pitfalls, okay, and how to navigate throughout them. And these tips can save you thousands of dollars if you are an African-American entrepreneur or want to be one, okay? Now, the death of George Floyd 
May 25th, 2020, in police custody, Minneapolis, Minnesota, renewed interest in supporting the economic advancement of African Americans. On the African History Network show, there were numerous stories that we talked about where we saw uh, African American owned businesses that had an increase in sales, uh, bookstores, uh, African American owned bookstores, the ones that had conscious information. They saw those are types of businesses that saw an increase in sales. And we wanted to redirect more of our dollars towards African-American owned businesses. Now, amid online support, African-American businesses saw huge spikes. Google searches for black owned businesses near me, black owned businesses near me reached an all time high uh, between May 31st and June 10th, uh, 2020, between May 31st and June 10th, 2020. But we saw a drop off uh, after that. And we saw those numbers return to uh, pre-COVID numbers as well. Okay, so according to a survey by the Black uh, by the U.S. Black Chamber of Commerce, around 75% of African American-owned small businesses saw upticks in customers in the two months after George Floyd's death. But a, but after the surge, sales at many African American-owned businesses plummeted back to their pre-COVID rates. Back to their pre-COVID rates. So. Eight out of 10, we looked at the statistics for businesses, small businesses overall. 20% uh, go out of business uh, in the uh, first year and then 50% by the fifth year in business, right? 80% of African-American owned businesses fail within the first 18 months. And this is something really to understand if you're looking at get, putting your life savings, putting your 401k uh, plan investment money into uh, uh, your business, you, you want to liquidate your stocks, things like this. This is something uh, the majority of these businesses are going to go out of business. And, and many of our entrepreneurs who mean well are going to lose thousands of dollars. COVID-19 has exacerbated some of the issues facing the African-American community. African-American entrepreneurs have had to close their doors at more than twice the rate of their white counterparts. African-American owned businesses, as reported by Forbes magazine, uh, and, and as well as I think with the New York Federal Reserve in uh, in April of 2020, 41 percent of African-American owned businesses shut down compared to 17 percent of white owned businesses. This was in um, April of 2020. So here are uh, I put together this list and I, I taught entrepreneurship for seven years, did business consulting for seven years for uh, in the nonprofit arena and the for profit arena. Um, I graduated from Wayne State in 1994, degree in business administration with a major in marketing. Um, I've managed retail establishments, managed uh, business consulting companies, janitorial service companies. I've had uh, managed companies where we had government contracts, city, county, and state of uh, Michigan contracts. So this is a culmination of that experience. So number one, badly thought through business plans, badly thought through business plans. I've also had the, when I taught entrepreneurship, I had to evaluate business plans as well uh, for my students. So you can, you can put your blood, sweat, and tears into your enterprise, but without a complete, solid, and realistic plan to start with, it's all for naught. It's all for naught. What you see as a perfect business plan on paper may not fare so well in reality okay it may it may look good on paper but it doesn't fare so well in reality especially when you deal with what it takes to start a business and dealing with competition and things like this a business plan should be based on current information and market research okay here's some of the things that your business plan should include an outline of achievable goals for your business a clear illustration of the strategies and timelines that should be implemented and met a picture of an ideal team okay so 95 percent of african-american owned businesses don't have any employees but you're going to have some that do who are going to be your team members who are your ideal team members to handle different things whether it's accounting marketing etc customer service etc if you have to outsource different uh duties okay what does that look like um a picture of an ideal team, detailed and up-to-date market analysis, the state of the competition, 
you have to understand what your competition is doing. You know, I went when I was in uh, wireless sales and wireless communications and so cell phones and different types of things like that, right we, we always looked at what the competition was doing what were the what were the incentives what were the uh promotions that the competition had when i was in retail sales this is the same thing we did i, uh, I used to manage radio shack for five years okay uh and we looked at who with the competitors what was best buy doing things like this well what, what was our competitive advantage also okay they were a huge uh they were a huge big box store we weren't a huge big box store. OK, so how do we compete against that financial projections? You're going to have this in your business plan as well. And plans for managing the business growth and budget plans for managing the business growth and budget. Now, while most African-American owned businesses um, have uh, solid business plans or some of them have a solid business plan because I've seen some terrible ones, only a few stick with them over only a few stick with them. If you start changing your strategies or doubling your spending, you're risking failure. So the business plan also is a living, breathing thing. OK, uh, and a lot of times people will put together a business plan and then put it in a drawer and then just operate from memory, but get away from the core principles of the business plan. But the, so you want to review that business plan maybe once a month, once a quarter, something like that. But um, it's a living, breathing thing. As conditions in the market change, you may have to go back and adjust some aspects of your business plan as well. But it's a guide. It's a roadmap. It's a GPS. OK, uh, but if you don't have a business plan and it doesn't have to be 30, 40, 50 page, uh, 30, 40, 50 page business plan. OK, it doesn't have to be that. It may be five, six, seven pages. It may start with a basic concept sheet one or two pages where you take your ideas and, and write them down, map them out, and then you start organizing it, put together your mission statement, different things like this, put together your financials, et cetera. Okay. Um, so you don't want to make this too complicated, but it's a, it's a guide. Number two, starting a business for the wrong reasons, starting a business for the wrong reasons. Okay. So some of the most often mentioned reasons for starting a business, are wanting more spare time, uh, spare time eventually, wanting a flexible schedule, no longer wanting a boss. Okay, how many times have you heard that? Okay, you, you want to work for yourself, you, you want to be your own boss, and pursuing your passion and pursuing your passion. Now, while these are all legitimate reasons to start a business, they are not always strong enough to carry the motivation and enthusiasm needed for business success through the times. Okay, first of all, you're probably going to if you do you start a business full time, it's a good chance you're going to work 60, 80, maybe more hours a week. Starting out, maybe that first year or so to get things, maybe the first six months, maybe the first year, depending upon the type of business to get things up and running. OK, uh, number one, uh, two, you want a flexible schedule. You're going to be working all the time. So you may have some flexibility in your schedule, but you're probably going to be working more hours than a regular nine to five job when you were working 40, 45, 50 hours a week. No longer wanting a boss. Your customer is going to be your boss. Your customer is going to be your boss. OK, how's everybody doing? Share this broadcasting on social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. Also, we'll let you know how you can advertise uh, with the African History Network. Uh, and uh, on the African History Network show as well and on our audio podcast of the shows also. Uh, so you can email us at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com, ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com. Our current promotion is uh, buy one month, get two months free, okay? Uh, ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com. All right, now, so... Your customer, when, when when you are in business, one of the mistakes people make is saying that they want to be their own boss. OK, so you may not have somebody that you report to. You may not have somebody checking and saying, why are you late to work? Things like this. Or uh, you have to get permission to go to lunch or leave early. But your customer is your boss. When you are in business, and if you pay attention to your customers, you're going to realize your customers are your boss. OK, your customers, if you say, say for instance, you're in retail management or, or you own a retail outlet. If you open your store at 9 a.m. But you don't have your first customer to 11 a.m. 
and you don't get any phone calls till 11 a.m. or 12. Your customers are telling you maybe you should open at 11 a.m. as opposed to 9 a.m. and you can save you can save the, the 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 amount of money that you have to pay employees you can save on electricity you can save on utilities you maybe you should open at 11 a.m instead of 9 a.m so your customers are telling you something but you're not maybe you're not paying attention to it okay so when you're in business yeah you may not have somebody that you report to but your your customer is your boss all right so um, they also underestimate many entrepreneurs also underestimate what is required for uh, a business, especially in the early days of the business. Now, one of the things that I, I recommend people do, and I've helped, I've done everything from um, help organize career fairs for a local community college here in Detroit. I was on the planning committee to organize two black expos uh, here in Detroit as well. One of the things um, I recommend is for people to take um, at least one entrepreneurship class, maybe go to a local community college, because I taught uh, an entrepreneurship class at a community college. I've done workshops on entrepreneurship, things like this. So I recommend people, if you have not, if you've never taken an entrepreneurship class and you want to start a business or if you even own a business, I recommend going to a local community college usually the credit out credit hours are much cheaper at a community college than a university take one entry level entrepreneurship class you're going to learn so much and it can save you thousands of lost dollars and it could keep your business from being one of the one of the statistics of 80 percent of african-american owned businesses going out of business in the first 18 months okay so don't be a statistic all right now some of the key factors okay number two starting a business for the wrong reasons some of the key factors that should be considered when starting a business are level of expertise in the industry that you have the amount of capital capital needed to start up and sustain and being realistic about how much time and, and resources will be needed okay now we know that there are various factors dealing with racism and white supremacy and undercapitalized businesses and historic discrimination when it comes to redlining and bank loans and things like this. Totally understand that. I've done lectures on that. Totally understand that as well. But there are also pitfalls and traps. There are also things that we can learn and how to navigate this as well. Okay, so this deals with mistakes not to make and if you're making these mistakes you can correct these also before it's too late okay let's continue all right and give us a thumbs up give us a heart give us a like on this broadcast and share this broadcast on your social media platforms as well follow us uh at the african history network on uh facebook and michael m tep on youtube i m h o t e p also uh uh michael m hotep on instagram as well okay let's continue so starting a business places a strain not only on the business owner but families and relationships as well okay and oftentimes you hear people who are in relationships with an entrepreneur they talk about how hard it is they may talk about the the entrepreneur working all types of crazy hours working around the clock you know when when we would when um when i was uh managing a couple of other uh, companies and we had to uh, we had uh, government contracts and we had to put in bids uh, to the county for contracts, things like this. You know, we're up two, three o'clock in the morning discussing the proposal, discussing the, the proposal that we're putting together because I was the one putting together the proposal and the owner of the company, he's talking to me on the phone. So you're going to keep crazy hours also. And that's just here, here's the thing. That's just if you deal with domestic business, when you start dealing with international business and you're dealing with countries you're dealing with people in countries and they're five six seven hours ahead of us that could put a strain on relationships also okay so starting a business places a strain not only on the business owner but families and relationships as well so before you start a business make sure that you are starting for the right reason and are prepared to handle all of the many responsibilities of a business owner and you know one of the things i talk about when i teach is that 
Um, so when we deal with corporations, we hear about CEOs, chief executive officers, right? Well, when you're an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, you're the CEO, you're the chief everything officer. You're responsible for everything. You may not do everything. You may, you, you, you may be able to delegate certain responsibilities, but you're responsible for everything. OK, so a, a lot of times because of movies and music videos, entertainment, things like this, we see music moguls, business moguls, things like this. Right. Oftentimes we may get an unrealistic idea of what entrepreneurship looks like or what entrepreneurship is. OK, this is some gut wrenching stuff. This ain't no joke. OK, this is not for the weak need this is not for the people who don't have the to, uh intestinal fortitude all right and this takes a, a whole lot of creativity to be able to sustain a business okay so before you start a business make sure that you are starting for the right reason all right and what is your mission statement because your mission statement helps to propel you through the ups and downs of having of having a business so for the african history network our mission statement is we focus on educating empowering and inspiring people of african descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior that's our mission statement okay so and when you listen to my radio show you listen to my broadcast i say that at the beginning of the show so that is part of when i did my business plan back in 2010 for the african history network that's part of my business plan that's, but this is our mission statement that's why I created this. This evolved. Not it, and I started um this really evolved uh just for the purpose of sharing information and it evolved into a business. I never thought it was going to get evolved into a business, things like this, but I just started out just sharing uh YouTube videos and sharing uh DVD lectures and things like this, and it it evolved from there. So what is your mission statement as well? Okay, this gives you your purpose and your passion can become a purpose and become your mission statement also. Okay, uh, and then one other thing here, let me back up. Uh, okay, we'll get to that. I'll make a note of that. Um, Cause I wanna talk about just briefly, uh, a lot of people may start a business with enough, they, they, a lot of people may start a business with enough money to start the business, but not enough money to stay in business. Also, that's something else. That could be a whole nother uh, broadcast. Okay, number three. Should you start a business because you hate your job? Should you start a business because you hate your job? So, I, I would hear people, and I would have people in in the uh, entrepreneurship classes I taught. And you ask them, OK, so why do you want to start a business? Things like this, because this this ain't this. You know, Sheila E. had the song, The Glamorous Life. This is not the glamorous life. This is gut wrenching stuff. Even when you become successful and blow up and you're a millionaire, things like this, you still got a whole hell of a lot of problems also. OK, more money, more problems. Um, I remember listening to the Michael Basin show. Years ago, 29, 2009, 2010, things like this. And he used to have a segment uh, dealing with live your life, living your dreams, uh, entrepreneurship, things like this. And I would hear people call in and they would say things like um, they want to quit their job and start a business. OK. And when I would have people in my, in my entre entrepreneurship classes or in seminars and say they want to quit their job and start a business. OK. First thing I'm, <laughs> I'm asking you, asking them is why. OK. And a lot of times people say, oh, they hate their job. They hate their job. That's why they want to quit their job and start a business. OK, I can understand you hating your job. But hating your job and starting a business is like, you know, jumping out of the frying pan into a towering inferno. Maybe the solution to you hating your job is to find a better job that you like. Maybe the solution to you hating your job is to find a better job that you like. That doesn't stress you out that maybe you are in a situation where you don't have to deal with as much microaggressions and racism and uh, uh, co-workers that you don't get along with, things like that. Because for some people, entrepreneurship can work. It ain't for everybody. OK, so if you hate your job 
and you're not making enough money, things like this, right? Probably for the first six months, year, 18 months, you may not even be able to take a salary from your first job. I mean, from your first business or from your business, depending upon the type of business and the revenue and your profit margins. You may not be able to take a salary. We know 80% of black owned businesses fell in the first 18 months. So maybe the solution to you hating your job is to fire your employer and get another job that you like better. The solution could be starting a business if that's the right thing for you. But a lot of times I hear people say they want to quit their job and start a business. And one of the things I, I would tell um, you know, my students is don't quit your day job because you're going to need that income from that job. The other thing is, is if you look at starting your business and say hey i'm gonna build my business up and in two years i'll have enough money based upon projections business plan revenue things like this i'll have enough money to walk away from the job well that can when you have an exit plan from a job you don't like but you still see nothing beats a steady a steady paycheck you got money you could pay your mortgage your bills Take care of your children things like that you may hate the job but if you start building the exit plan because one of the things i would tell people is start building your business while you're employed while you have steady dependable income coming in on the first and the 15th or once a month or once a week however however you get paid okay start building your business while you have steady income coming in don't wait till you don't have money coming in and you're trying to figure out how to pay the bills and all this stuff and then you want to start a business because it's going to take money to start that business that business has to be financed and the business is like having a child okay at one years old most likely unless they're you know in baby commercials or something like that most likely at one years old your child is not going to be able to generate income most likely at one years old most likely they're not going to be able to get a job a new business is like a baby. It requires financial investment before it starts paying off, before it starts generating revenue and profits. Okay, so a lot of times we go into this, you know, with totally unrealistic expectations. Okay, now African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast also. And uh, email us at AHN show at African History Network.com. We'll let you know how you can advertise your black owned business with the African History Network and on the African History Network show. And our show is also on 10 audio podcast platforms Google Podcasts, Facebook Podcasts, iTunes, iTunes, Stitcher, FM Player, TuneIn.com. So we'll give you uh, some more information about that. Uh, post the name of your um, business here on the thread of the broadcast. And uh, we'll let you know how you can also advertise uh, with the African History Network uh, as well. OK, and you can also call us uh, at 313-462-0003, 313-462-0003. If you call, please leave a, a name, phone number and um, the name of your business and an email address so we can uh, get back with you as well. OK, so. Um, let me go back to this here. So once again, you want to make sure that you're, um, uh, starting the business for the right reason. And just cause you hate your job doesn't mean that you should, that doesn't mean you should start a business. The solution may be getting a better job that you like. However, if you do want to start a business, that business can be part of your exit strategy for leaving a job you don't like or you may quit that job get a second job you like better and still create your business but that's your exit plan okay so keep that in mind now because when you have an exit plan that can really cause you to reassess how well you like that job if you if you realize okay look I'm going to be out of here in a year. I'm going to be out of here 18 months. I'm going to build this business and this steady income I have from this job. I'm going to take advantage of the benefits, the 401k plan, tuition reimbursement. I'm going to take advantage of all these benefits. Okay. 
yeah i don't like that yeah i don't like that person in the cubicle next to me but i'm gonna take full advantage of all these benefits now and and, and take this steady paycheck to build my exit strategy okay number four lack of commitment starting a business requires someone who is committed to ensuring that it succeeds starting a business requires someone who is committed who is committed to ensuring that it succeeds this will include uh long hours tough decisions and doing tasks that you do not like to do neglecting the business will cause the business to fail neglecting the business will cause the business to fail many small businesses have failed because the owners did not invest the time and effort needed uh, for success this is one of the reasons why I, I, I really recommend that people take at least uh, one entrepreneurship class go to uh, local community college you could take an entrepreneurship class for a semester entrepreneurship seminars are good but a class you're gonna learn so much in it okay and it could really save you thousands of lost dollars it could keep your business from going belly up keep you from becoming a statistic far too many people are sold the false dream of a four-hour work week or only working 20 hours per week in the early stages of business that is simply not true now if you're just doing a part-time business if you now some people may say the other thing that's important to understand um is that you may realize okay look i want to start this business but i'm just going to do this business part-time you don't have to do the business full-time you can keep working your nine to five job you can stay in your career and work a business part-time you may just do something on the weekend you may go you may have a booth at festivals on the weekend during the summer church events things like this and that's your part-time business while you work full-time now one of the things that i don't ever do and i know you have some people that talk about going to you know working for corporations things like that and they they talk about working on the plantation okay let me explain something to you i'm a historian i've been studying history for 30 years i i have over I have about 45 of my lectures on dvd i speak all across the country before the mayfly by Lerone bennett jr this is the old copy is beat up i know um i've studied slavery i've studied the history of slavery i've read slave narratives you going to a job working nine to five or 10 hours a day or 12 hours a day having benefits 401k plan two weeks pay vacation one week pay vacation tuition reimbursement things like that is not slavery i've studied what slavery is that's not slavery you may not like your job that's understandable but you can quit your job today they'll send you your last pay paycheck on friday and you can keep your health insurance for another 18 months that's not slavery i've studied what slavery is so one thing i don't do i would never disrespect our ancestors compared to you going to a job that you applied for you applied for the job most likely ain't like they came to your home and snatched you up and said you're gonna work here and we're gonna pay you go study what slavery is read some slave narratives read frederick Douglass, one of his three autobiographies that's not slavery okay back to the presentation so for lack of commitment starting a business requires someone who is committed to ensuring that it succeeds uh far too many people are sold the false dream of a four-hour work week or only working 20 hours per week or you we see entrepreneurs right after they made it we didn't see the struggle we 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 didn't see the sleepless nights and them trying to figure out how to pay this pay that so you know we have this idea of uh i talk about popping mop popping bottles with models like in the club like diddy or jay-z something like that in the music video and we see them popping bottles with models and like that's our concept okay <laughs> of entrepreneurs you see them after the after the success you don't see the struggle and the years of struggle it took them to get to that point <laughs> all right 
So number five, once we make some money, we'll advertise. This is one of the huge mistakes. And when I was in radio sales 20 years ago, 20, 20, 22 years ago here in Detroit, and I would call on small businesses, this is one of the things I would hear, okay? Once we make some money, we'll advertise, okay? Not having a proper marketing budget, not understanding the need to advertise, et cetera. So how do you drive traffic to your business? How do you let people know you exist? And just because you, and, and you know, some people say, well, we, we have a social media platform. We have, you know, we have the uh, Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, but just because you have a social media platform doesn't, doesn't mean people are going to go to your social media platform, one. Two, doesn't mean they're going to, show up to your business because they saw your ad on your social media platform. So how do you drive traffic to your business? How do you let people know that you exist? Uh, and I, I remember calling on different African-American owned businesses, new, new businesses. Okay. Um, about 22 years ago and I would meet with them and I was in radio sales then I would meet with them and they liked the, the, the uh, advertising schedule I put together for them, but they didn't have the money new business they have inventory brick and mortar store brick and mortar store they have uh, i remember calling on a shoe store okay uh and they show so women's shoes and they said when we make some money we'll advertise how are people going to know you're here if you don't advertise how are you going to drive business and drive the right customers to your business how the what type of market research did you do just because you have people coming through your door does that mean it's the right type of customers that you want are they are they um spectators or are they actually potential customers because if they don't have any money and they're just looking i mean i don't think you can pay your lease with window shoppers so these are all things to look at if we just create a world-class so some entrepreneurs have this idea if we just create a world-class product service or store then the customer is going to find us no it, it doesn't work like that in the real world you may have some people that wander in you know i, I remember when um i used to imagine radio shack and we were in the strip mall and there was a clothing store or either, or or even better yet when we when uh one radio shack i managed we were in an enclosed mall okay like a old you know the regular shopping mall enclosed mall right so the husbands will wander to the radio shack while the wives are at the department store shopping okay well they're just wandering in a lot of times they may not buy anything but they're just wandering in trying to kill time things like this right that doesn't contribute to your sales goals because that's one of the things that you want to have on a monthly hopefully hopefully you have sales goals on a monthly basis so you can meet your you know your your, your uh, needed expenditures, your lease, pay your employees, utilities. So you got to have sales goals, annual sales goals broken down, a quarterly sales goals broken down, a monthly sales goals. You could break it down per day, okay? Because like if you have a, a a retail establishment or something like that, you want to have daily sales goals. Um, even the most well established businesses still market coca-cola mcdonald's burger king amazon apple general motors ford chrysler you know hewlett packard they all advertise some at different times of the year some may be may be more seasonal so you see peaks during certain times of the year uh but they all advertise All right, so African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Email us at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com, ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. And, and uh, we take your 30-second to 60-second uh, ad, uh, your video commercial. Either you have one or we can create one for you, no additional charge. You put this into 
uh, the broadcast of, of our shows at the African History Network show. And also goes into a audio version, goes into the audio podcast of uh, our shows as well. So we're on 10 different audio podcast platforms, uh, Facebook podcasts, Google podcasts, iTunes, iHeartRadio, FM Player, TuneIn, CastBox, Stitcher, etc. Reach thousands of people across the country uh, on a weekly basis. Um, and then also we have some other um, we have some other ways we can help you as well. But email us at AHN show at African History Network dot com. A current promotion is uh, buy one month, get two months free for a very limited time. Only buy one month, uh, get two months free and can, we can get you uh, up and running today as well. If you know you want to do it and you don't have your ad ready or don't have a script for us to record, you can still contact us. We can get you locked in. And then uh, once you send us your script or, or what have you, we, we can get that uh, going for you and get that up and running. All right. Okay, let's continue. And then uh, whether you have an e-commerce store, you may have an e-commerce store, brick and mortar store. Uh, you may have a, a store that sells African cultural products, African clothing, books, uh, inspirational books, history books, etc. You may have... Um, you may sell health and beauty products. OK, you may sell health and beauty products. Uh, you may have a clothing store. Um, it could be, you know, regular clothing, African centered garb, et cetera. Uh, you may have an educational business. You, you may do homeschooling. You may teach courses, financial courses, et cetera. Uh, tutoring business. You may be promoting events, uh, conferences, seminars because uh, we know we're going into that season. You may sell African jewelry. You may be a personal trainer, have a fitness website, et cetera. Okay, email us at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com and uh, we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. All right, let's continue here. So number six, okay, uh, 17 reasons why African-American-owned businesses go out of business in the first 18 months. Don't make these mistakes. Don't make these mistakes. Number six, don't quit your day job. Don't quit your day job. Not just yet. Especially if you're just starting a business. It's like a one-year-old child. And you want the child to go out and get a job, bring some money into the house. No. The business is an investment. Your business most likely won't be able to afford you or pay you a comparable salary for two to three years or maybe even more pay you a comparable salary what you're making now or maybe just even less but just something for you to survive and be able to pay your bills and things like this take care of your family 18 percent of black owned businesses fail in the first 18 months okay uh 20 percent of um 20 percent of businesses fail in the in the uh first two years okay 20% of fault well, as, as, as I say, in the first year, 20% of uh, small businesses fell in the first year, 50% fell in the first five years. So you will still need to have income to pay your bills, et cetera, meet your financial obligations. And you're going to need multiple streams of income also. So you probably need income more than just the job, maybe more than just the business. Maybe other things that you do to generate revenue may not be every month, maybe uh, different times of maybe different times of the year, but multiple streams of income as well, because you're going to have to constantly invest money into the business for the business to grow. And expand, acquire inventory, acquire equipment, acquire technology is a, is a constant. A business is a constant investment. OK, so if you find that you got to take money out of the business to meet your own personal financial needs, that's going to reduce the ability of the business to grow. OK, you, you, your business can't afford you. You, 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 you are a dependent. You're, you're, you are a dependent of your business. And that takes away capital that you need to reinvest into your business to grow and to sustain the business number seven too much overhead excessive overhead too much of overhead so starting a business rushing out and getting a, a business logo business cards 
office space, an assistant, new office furniture, a new computer without having a plan for generating revenue. So you're good at spending money, but not good at making money. You're good at, at spending money, but not good at making money. The business will be a, a, an uphill battle all the way because the expenses of all the business are high from the start. One key to success is to keep overhead and expenses as low as possible. Expansion and increased overhead should not come until there is revenue to support it. So you want to manage every dollar and look at what the return on investment is and look at is this a need is this a want is this something that's necessary right now etc so a lot of times people get you know a lot of times people get excited about having their own business and they may sign a lease for office space or for uh, retail space things like this and, and and get ahead of the gun and, and take on all this overhead and your revenue projections may not even be at at the point to meet your uh your your uh, overhead experience expenditures your monthly expenditures because you try to take on uh too much responsibility too quick too quickly out of excitement out of enthusiasm oftentimes okay so this is uh reason number seven reason number eight lack of delegation lack of delegation small businesses struggle in the early stages as the owners attempt to do every task and do uh, and do not effectively delegate tasks to other people and manage their performance there are uh there are a few reasons that this happens so the first reason many owners are control freaks and do not believe anyone can do as good a job as themselves okay now so for some people that may be why they started their own business okay i know that one of the reasons why i walked away from jobs i was working and companies i was working for things like this is um how should i put this politely with with the exception of a former college professor that i worked for managed his businesses i got tired of working for other people who i knew i was smarter than and they knew i was smarter than them as well that's just i mean just i, I got tired of, i got tired of being in that situation because you you know you you working in the company I, I, and i remember you know so my degree is in business and i'm working for companies and i see different moves that they're making and decisions that they're making from the higher ups and they're making more money than me and they're making stupid decisions and i'm like okay who'd you consult with before you made this decision this makes no sense whatsoever so i got tired of working for people who i knew i was smarter than and they knew i was smarter than them oftentimes as well so first reason many owners are control freaks and do not believe anyone can do as good a job as themselves okay and once again going back to ceo when you have CEOs of corporations, the chief executive officers, when you're a CEO of a small business, your own business, you're a chief everything officer. OK, so the buck stops with you, but you may not have to do everything. You may not be able to do everything. You have to be able to delegate responsibilities also. And, and, and a lot of times because people look at the business as their as their baby, their business for many people is like their own child, oftentimes people have a, a hard time delegating certain responsibilities I, I you know i've suffered from that <laughs> previously as well okay it could be hard uh and, and and one thing that people may realize they have to do is reduce their scope of services reduce the amount of services or products that they offer because it's just too much for them okay and then also learn how to delegate certain things that you can delegate as well for this reason entrepreneurs try to do everything themselves and do not realize that they are not getting everything done and wasting time on administrative work that takes away from growing the business we'll talk about the 80 20 rule here in just a minute also second reason when we it comes to lack of delegation second reason due to a lack of funds 
small businesses usually hire lower paid employees that are less skilled due to the lack of funds small businesses usually usually hire lower paid employees that are less skilled in this case it is true that the quality of work is less than adequate the quality of work is less than less than adequate but since the business cannot afford higher paid well skilled well skilled employees it must deal with this until it grows okay so number nine um failure to plan failure to plan and you fail to and you plan to fail failure to plan and you plan to fail how many people have heard this um saying for years if you fail to plan you plan to fail okay <laughs> okay the thought of writing a 30 page a 30 page business plan is overwhelming to most people which is why only a small percentage of small businesses have them now oftentimes it's not necessary to have a 30 page business plan and i, I and i remember when uh, i was teaching entrepreneurship and um we were helping people get government grants okay it was a uh, um it was for small startup businesses or businesses that may have been in business maybe a year and it was for uh, a total of five thousand dollars it was four thousand dollars from the federal government in the form of a grant and you had to deposit a thousand dollars into a bank a business bank account over the course of six weeks it was of course because class class we taught was six weeks so you had to deposit a thousand dollars into a business bank account uh over the course of six weeks and do the business plan go through the uh six week course we were working with the federal government i can't i think it, i can't remember if it's a small business administration or what have you this is like 10 12 is uh, about 12 14 years ago um and then after the, after the end of the course you do you had to do the business plan you had to put together a business plan we approved the business plan and uh you had to have a legally structured business also okay so if you did not already have a legally structured business the llc what have you um then you would do that in the class as well and then at the end of the class you would get a uh, four thousand dollar check from the federal government and you could deposit that into uh your account so these were it was four thousand dollars in matching funds you deposit a thousand dollars into a bank four thousand dollars in matching funds from the federal government and this was a grant but not a loan so you didn't have to pay this back it was a grant it was it was sweet <laughs> because what happened was i found out so, so teaching the teaching the class and um we were uh we were working with a nonprofit organization the company i was managing we were working with a nonprofit organization so i found out <laughs> that i qualified my business qualified also for the program so i took advantage of that also i said hey <laughs> i'm gonna take advantage of this so that was sweet so the next time around they did the program from the federal government there was more oversight and it wasn't as good it was less money wasn't as good as the first time but <laughs> man that was that was a hell of a deal right there okay so the thought of writing a 30-page business plan is overwhelming the most and a lot of people don't need a 30-page business plan this is why i tell a lot of students I say you don't need a 30-page 40-page 50-page business plan to get four thousand dollars it's just not necessary um which is why only a small percentage of small businesses have them although a full business plan is is um idea uh something much shorter will suffice now the most important reason to have a business plan is to ensure that you have considered every aspect of the business and how it will be handled okay now your business plan plan may not be perfect that's understandable you don't want to work on a business plan for two three four years before you start your business okay it may not be perfect but it's a guy and and the other thing it's a living breathing thing your business plan is going to change your business plan is going to change as conditions in the market change as uh the economy changes etc your business plan is going to change the other thing is we'll talk about this here in a minute 
there's a time to get into a certain type of business, a certain industry. There's a time to get out of a certain type of business, a certain industry as well. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, <laughs> know when to walk away, know when to run. <laughs> okay, Kenny, uh, Kenny Rogers, the gambler. <laughs> okay, just because, you know, j- yeah, yes, we need more legacy businesses. But just because your great grandfather started a business or your grandfather started the business and it's a family business, that don't it, it may be time to close that door and start a new business that's more relevant. Okay, number nine, failure to plan and you plan to fail. It also said the business plan also sets a clear picture of the future and keeps everyone focused on the right thing. It sets a clear picture for the future and keeps everyone focused on the right thing. Now, when uh, there is not a written business plan, when there is not a written business plan, the business can go in various directions and too many situations will occur that have not been uh, planned for. So this this is one of the things that, that I found with a lot of new startup businesses, right? They try to grow too quickly and they try to offer too many services or too many different types of services, too many different types of products too quickly. And it becomes a problem. Okay. Your business plan helps to keep you focused. It helps give you purpose. So you, you may find businesses, they start offering all different types of services and they don't have anything to do with their mission statement. The services are, uh, not related, et cetera. I remember I, I, when I was, um, selling radio ads, uh, there was one African American owned business and they started out, they were a cell phone carrier. They were an authorized retailer of a uh, cell phone company. And then they had a, they had a, uh, kind of like a business center where people could come in and do faxes. I mean, this is like 20, 22 years ago. Okay. We didn't have the, the, uh, printers with the fax machine built in okay this is like um 99 2000 pretty pretty much so um so a lot of people didn't have that so they they, every time i would go visit them there are more services and products and things that they're offering and you have to manage that if it's physical product you have to do inventory the other thing is they're growing pains and there's a knowledge base that's required when you offer more products, especially when they're te- technologically based. You got to have an expert in that company that knows how to sell the product, but also knows how to help customers who have problems with the product. So if you go from selling 10 products to 30 to 40 to 50, because you're just looking at dollars and see more revenue, that's more headache also. OK, you have growing pains There's a knowledge base that needs to be acquired for each different type of product as well. And then you also have to understand how to troubleshoot problems also for products and and services. So these are all different things to to look at. OK, I, I, and I remember having students in the class and, you know, we would tell them, OK, look, you're doing too much. You are offering too many products. You're trying to do too many services. OK, you need to scale this down. To something that's manageable and a lot of times people just think more is better okay just having more products and expanding and offering more and more and more is better no that's more headache so when there is not a written plan the business can go in various directions and too many situations will occur that have not been planned for you can uh end up offering too many services or products sometimes unrelated to your business so you may bake cakes and drop engines you may bake cakes and do oil changes like in your backyard well you have the skill to do oil changes but your business but you're a bakery what does that have to do with with the bakery but because you didn't have a business plan you weren't focused you should start doing all this other stuff OK, it's, it's like um, I remember on Sanford and Son one time <laughs> there's, a, there's an episode, uh, I think I think it's the episode when uh, Fred saw a hypnosis or something. was it hypnosis or something. But it's like, you know, you have the people who. Oh, I remember. Um, you remember the uh, 
uh, when Lamont got the traffic ticket the, and he ran a red light and uh, Antonio Fargus was the guy who came over. He was an attorney and uh, he was a tailor. He was an attorney, but he also had a tailoring business. OK, and he's giving legal advice. All right. But he, he, he wasn't licensed by the state of California to give legal advice. OK, so you you're doing all these different types of things. You know, they, 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 the Jamaicans get a stereotype for having, you know, 13, 14 different jobs, things like this. But you're doing all these different types of things that are not related. OK, or you have a business card and, and the business card has six, seven different things on there that you do. And it's not related. It's not under one business. OK, so you do you're trying to do too much. You can end up offering too many services or products, sometimes unrelated to your business. And all this takes up time. Now, the other thing is very important. And we're going to go to uh, number 10 here in just a second. The other thing is very important is if you own a business that um, has employees and employees have uh, different responsibilities, you want to have when I was in retail, we had what was called a store operating manual. OK, you want to have some type of operational manual that spells out that has written the duties and responsibilities of each job description the duties and responsibilities of each job description. And this is something that everybody can go to and look at. So when they're trying to figure out what's the responsibility of Keisha on the cash register and Keisha is arguing, arguing with Jelani who's stocking shelves and you're supposed to do that. No, you are supposed to do that. You can go, everybody can go to the store operating manual and read what is the responsibility of the cashier? What is the responsibility of the person stocking inventory? What is the responsibility of the manager, things like this. You, you, it has to be clearly defined. If it, if it's all in the owner's head, if it's all in the owner's head, what happens if the owner has to go on vacation? What happens if the owner is in the hospital? What happens if the owner passes away? So you have to, so you want to have an operational manual as well that explains the, the job description, the duties, the responsibilities of all of the different employees, all of the different positions. And also procedures, also procedures, making deposits, giving refunds, uh, the, the different duties that take place, you need to have an operational manual of those procedures. That cuts down on a whole lot of arguing back and forth. You said this, no, you said this, but it's, it's written. So as long as you can read and comprehend, it's right there. You don't have to argue. Proper documentation ends all conversation. Okay, let's continue. So um, one of the things that, that I learned doing project management and in uh, taking entrepreneur, when I was taking entrepreneurship classes in class, but also teaching entrepreneurship classes and studying uh, project management, time management skills, different things like this is a strategic thinking um because these are some books when i was doing uh when i was doing some project management these are some books that i got in the dk series essential manager so when i was teaching entrepreneurship and doing um i was working on some projects we were we were uh managing uh career fairs for a local community college so these are some books that i got from the dk series they had some really good books one on project management OK, and these were like at the time, seven dollars. OK, I got this back in 2006. OK, uh, December 2006, one on project management, one on managing credit, um, one on strategic thinking, strategic thinking. OK. Uh, brainstorming systems, techniques, logic, because I was doing we were we're, we were managing uh, some different projects and doing consulting for um, nonprofit organizations also and coaching successfully as well. Coaching successfully also. OK, not sports coaching, but this deals with uh, managing employees and coaching employees also. OK, so. One of the things that you will come across is the smart system for planning and goal setting, the SMART system for planning and goal setting. SMART is an acronym, S-M-A-R-T. The S stands for specific, 
uh, state the goal precisely. What is what what is the goal that you want to achieve? State it precisely. Write it out. The goal has to be measurable. M has to be measurable. It needs to be quantifiable. Has to be measurable. So, like when I was working in customer service, and we had CSAT scores, customer satisfaction scores, right? And a goal for a particular quarter may be to uh, increase this, uh, get the CSAT score to ninety percent. Okay, that's quantifiable. As opposed to, we need to have better CSAT scores. We need to do better. That's not measurable. 90% CSAT score. That's quantifiable. Then you put together, you do backwards planning and put together a plan to achieve that. Okay. So you want to make sure that your goal is specific. State state the goal precisely. When need, write it down. Two, the goal needs to be measurable. It needs to be quantifiable. How do you determine when you reach the goal? How is it measured? Three, the goal has to be attainable. Okay. You have to have the proper resources needed to complete the goal and, 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 and make sure the goal is within reach. So you have to have the resources, the finances to achieve the goal. The goal may be specific and it may be measurable, but you may not have the finances to achieve the goal. So what good is the goal? Three or four, the R is relevant. The goal is applicable to your business. The goal has to be relevant. A lot of times you could do the right thing at the wrong time. A lot of times you can have the right goal, but it's not applicable to your mission statement or it's not applicable to your goals for that quarter or that year. And you're allocating resources to try to achieve something that doesn't fall in line with what your goals are. OK, so you want to make sure that the goal is relevant okay relevant to your business re re relevant to your goals your monthly revenue projections your quarterly revenue projections etc the t is time bound one of the most important things when it comes to goal setting they have to be time bound the goal has has a completion date or time frame a start date and an end date and then you have to have checkpoints in between to make sure that you're on pace to achieve the goal if the goal is just open ended, OK, we want to we want to do this. OK, we want to achieve this, but there's no time frame for it. It'll be two, three years from now. You're talking about we still want to do this. So it has to be time bound. OK, it has to be specific, has to be measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound. And when it's time bound, you want to have. So if it's a goal that you want to achieve 90 days from now, you want to have checkpoints every two weeks or every, at least every month, but pr pr probably every two weeks to make sure you're on track to reach that goal in 90 days. Okay. If you, if you don't have those checkpoints, 90 days will come and go and you, you would not have met the goal. So this comes from, um, the, the, the small business administration, SBA.gov has some good information. They have a, 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 a document. There's a 22 page document. Um, Time management for a small business at SBA.gov, Small Business Administration. Time management for a small business. Okay, number nine. Okay, we're looking at 17 reasons why 80% of Black-owned businesses go out of business in the first 18 months. Number nine, poor market research. Poor market research. And you're getting a lot of my expertise as well, okay, <laughs> in this also. Uh, ensuring consumers want the goods you sell seems like a no-brainer unfortunately many african-american owned businesses fail for the simple reason that no one wants to buy what they're selling no one wants to buy what they're selling okay so you may be doing something that's your passion and you love it and you put all your your heart and soul and all your sweat and, and blood equity and all this into it but is there a market for it do people value it are people willing to spend money for your product or service? So you may be, you may believe a hundred percent in what you do. Is there a market for it? Have you identified the market? Are you communicating with the market? Have you established relationships with people in that target market? Poor market research. 
Unfortunately, many African-American-owned businesses fail for the simple reason that no one wants to buy what they're selling. You can have enough capital, the most ingenious idea, and a great business plan to get everything off the ground. But if no one wants your product, it's only a matter of time before your business crashes. If no one wants your product, it's only a matter of time before your business crashes or fails and you become a statistic. So um, ensuring consumers want the goods you sell. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go to the next slide here. A product needs to fulfill an unmet need or solve a problem. Now, this sounds basic, but a lot of times people don't look at it like this. OK, a product needs to fulfill an unmet need or solve a problem. It, it's much easier to satisfy an existing need rather than create one and persuade consumers that they should spend money on it. So if you identify existing problems, see, because entrepreneurs, the way I define entrepreneurship, now that I've looked at different textbooks and things like this, and they have a paragraph to define what an entrepreneur is. Entrepreneur is somebody who identifies problems that other people can't solve for their own and they charge for it. That's what entrepreneur is. Entrepreneur is someone who identifies problems that other people can't solve on their own. OK, and they provide a solution and they charge for it. That's what an entrepreneur is. I've seen different definitions of entrepreneurs and there's some Ph.D. that came up with this definition, all this. No, this is this is really what entrepreneurs are. OK, they solve problems that other people can't solve on their own and they do it for a profit. Knowing the customer's income level, gender and age is vital for proper marketing strategies. Market research will help you ensure that the product does not miss the mark. Now, the question is. You want to ask yourself with the business, the service, what have you, is like, what problem are you solving? An entrepreneur is someone who solves problems people cannot solve on their own, and they do it for a profit. Okay, they do it for a profit. Now, number 10, uh, not studying your competition, not studying your competition. And when I was working for different companies, things like this, we had to look at what the competition was doing. OK, and sometimes the competition acquires another competitor. T-Mobile acquired Sprint. All right. I used to work for Sprint. I remember when we used to laugh at T-Mobile <laughs> and T-Mobile, T-Mobile bought Sprint. OK, so not studying your competition, focusing on your own business instead of others is good advice. However, a great many black owned businesses lose out to competitors because they did not pay attention to the competitive landscape of their business. You have to look at what your competitors are doing. Also, even when you launch a new product in the market, it does not take long before new companies start to pop up vying for their place in the sun. Pay attention to the landscape because the landscape changes. The competitors change. OK, so you want to look at what the competition is doing. And then really understand what your competitive advantage is, your competitive advantage. What do you do? Uh, what comes easily to you that comes hard to others? OK, what can you do that other people's other people can't or struggle at doing? But you want to look at what the competition is, because the because in the in the market. That competitive market continues to change and is also influenced by the economy. So businesses may go out of business because of bad economies, et cetera. So this is something to look at, but you want to study the competition. Number 11. OK, 17 reasons why 80 percent of black owned businesses go out of business in the first 18 months. Number 11, bad team chemistry can cause explosions to happen. Bad team chemistry can cause explosions to happen, lacking the correct team composition is another reason behind failure of many African-American-owned businesses. This is a huge mistake that will result in failure from the start. 
Now, some people say, oh, you shouldn't hire family. OK, some people say, oh, you shouldn't hire family in your business. OK, well, go tell that to Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Thai, uh, people from Taiwan. Go tell that to uh, uh, Jews, Irish, Chaldeans, Arabs, uh, every, every other ethnic group. Because you go in their businesses, you'll see the husband, the wife, the cousins, the uncle the children, things like this. So the problem is not in having taught entrepreneurship for years and managed businesses. The problem is not necessarily having family members in a business because a lot of the businesses in America are family owned businesses. The problem is not having family members in the business or working in the business. The problem is delegating delegating the wrong responsibility to the to a particular family member having the wrong person do a particular job okay if you know that um I'm trying to think of a name well uh, <laughs> so if you know kiki or keisha or janet okay if you know she has anger management problems why would you put on a cash register to deal with customers? Okay, she's taking like her second anger management class. You already know she has anger management problems. Why would you put on the cash register to deal with customers? She should be in the back doing work away from the customers. She may be a good employee. She shows up on time, doesn't talk on the phone the whole time she's at work, doesn't try to leave early, you know, things like this but but you put her in the bad situation you delegated the wrong responsibility to her you put her in the wrong job so family it, see i hear people say don't do business with family don't go into business with family don't have family working in your business that's not that's it, all the other ethnic groups do that all other all the other ethnic groups have family-owned businesses have their kids working in the business and their aunts and uncles and they'll bring people over from the from the old country they'll bring people over from that native country and come right and work in their business but you have to put that person in the right position okay so Lacking the correct team composition is another reason behind the failure of many black owned businesses. This is a huge mistake that will result in failure from the start. It is vital to create a team of dedicated individuals with complementary traits and characteristics. While it's not easy to find the right talent for the jobs, resources like Facebook, LinkedIn, Indeed.com have made it easier to do so. Also, you can go to your if you if you belong to a church a mosque or something like that you can go there because they always know people who are looking for jobs they always know people looking for jobs people there in the uh uh congregation of people you know network with that as well okay now you want to make sure you get the right person for the right job okay but still this is what other ethnic groups do this is one of the reasons why a lot of other ethnic groups businesses are successful yes we deal with yes we've been stripped of our of african history and culture and this gives us our foundation and this gives us a cultural paradigm that we see reality through it gives us our values our interests and our principles and other uh businesses rely on their that cultural their cultural cohesiveness that binds a people together and teaches them the only way they're going to survive is through self-reliance okay through working together the their cooperatives their cooperative economics things like this doesn't mean that they don't get involved in politics that's that's that, that doesn't mean they don't get involved in politics that's something else but they have that cohesiveness they use their language they use their culture to uh create fences barriers around their communities and they market their culture they have cultural based businesses etc okay because we've largely been stripped of our history and culture and we've largely been taught to hate ourselves 
this this causes more obstacles for african-american owned businesses also when i teach history you know uh, two of my teachers dr leonard jeffries and professor jane small they talk about the pyramid principle and the foundation of the pyramid is african history and culture it gives us our vips our values our interests and our principles it gives us a cultural paradigm that we see reality through but it also teaches us how we see ourselves what you do for yourself what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself what you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself what you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read heard and seen about yourself so the names that you call yourself how you see yourself impacts your self-development your self-worth and self-esteem when that history and culture is in place it influences your economic empowerment and influences how you engage in economics, the types of businesses you have. But it also influences see, see people who respect themselves don't call themselves the derogatory, dehumanizing names and don't call their women B's and H's and thoughts and things like this. People who see them who have positive self-esteem and they don't allow other people to dehumanize them as well. But when we've been stripped of that African history and culture and we've been taught to see ourselves through the eyes of our, our oppressors and, and see ourselves through the eyes of white supremacy and racism okay then oftentimes we accept those uh dehumanizing terms all right so why would you want to uh uh spend your dollars with somebody you think is lesser than or dehumanizing or inward or dehumanizing or inward and this also connects to politics as well because we have to have a synthesis of african history and culture economic empowerment and political empowerment as well and leverage our economics to enforce our politics politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth power and resources and the writing of laws statutes ordinances amendments and treaties their adoption interpretation and enforcement politics shapes the economy and shapes the atmosphere that your black owned business operates within and and relies upon to survive okay go, go back to COVID, april 2020 41 percent of black owned businesses has shut down they've gone out of business because of the horrific economy all right so all this we have to have a synthesis of all of this all right um but the foundation is african history and culture and when we study our history we see the cooperatives the, the co-op the cooperative economics that we had in the co-ops okay and the co-ops was a type of uh, uh with, with different types of organizations that we had to help our black owned businesses like the colored merchants association created about 1928 1929 it comes out of national Na uh, national negro business league founded by booker t washington in 1900 and these different types of cooperatives that we had were designed to help african-american owned businesses uh better compete against uh, uh white businesses uh and they uh, pull their resources together to get economies of scale when they bought products uh get lower prices on products uh they 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 did things like learned about marketing strategies accounting principles etc uh there was one for uh farmers the colored farmers union founded about 1886 in texas grew to 1.2 million members and they're working together this is a concept of cooperative economics they're sharing farm equipment etc and one one of the things that happened is a lot of the cooperatives that we had was so popular and so successful that it put our lives in danger and we got attacked by white supremacy okay and this is why a lot of our cooperatives had to disband uh if you read the book collective courage by dr jessica gordon emhard um she talks about this in her book collective courage okay so number 11 bad chemistry it is vital to create a team of dedicated individuals with complementary traits and characteristics. Okay, so African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Email us at AHN show at African History Network.com. AHN show at African History Network.com. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the uh, African History Network and on the African History Network show. In our, in our audio podcast we're on 10 different audio podcast platforms also if you don't have a commercial we can create one for you no additional charge uh, a video commercial as well as an audio commercial a current promotion buy one month get two months free okay email us at ahn show 
at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, and uh, we can get you up and running today. Even if you say, hey, I want to take advantage, because we have limited uh, advertising space. But if you say, hey, I want to take advantage of this, but I don't have my script ready, I don't have a commercial, still contact us. We can get you locked in today, get your space reserved, and you can send us your script when you have it. Or if you don't have a script, we can create one for you, uh, and we can create a commercial for you, no additional charge. Uh, also, but email us at AHN show at African history and post post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. So you may have a e-commerce store or a brick and mortar store. OK, and we reach people all across the country um, and uh, our broadcast. We share them throughout the day here on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, as well as the 10 audio podcast platforms that I'm on. Also, iHeartRadio. Google Podcasts, Facebook Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, CastBox, FM Player, TuneIn. You may sell um, African cultural products. You may sell, uh, uh, you may target the African American community. You may have health and beauty products, clothing, shoes, African garb, books dealing with African history, African American history, self-help books, things like this. You may be a book author. You may, may, be, may be a bookstore. You may have educational products you may have uh homeschooling resources and curriculums courses uh uh financial uh literature financial classes etc you may be promoting events uh juneteenth events african-american history month events etc uh you may have conferences or seminars you want to promote you may sell african jewelry you may be uh so have a fitness website or sell fitness gear you may be a personal trainer email us at ahn show at africanhistorynetwork.com Okay, let's go to um wanna to go to this next one. Let's go to number 12. 17 reasons why 80% of African American owned businesses go out of business in the first 18 months. Let's go to number 12. Cash flow issues. Cash flow issues. So even large companies with robust uh marketing strategies can fall prey to lack of positive cash flow can fall prey to lack of positive cash flow cash flow issues are a major culprit in the failure of african-american owned businesses businesses with a positive cash flow uh have the required operating funds to settle debts pay employees reinvest in the business etc Okay, now, cash flow is, is extremely important, all right? Cash flow difficulties occur when too much of a business's revenues are tied up in accounts receivable, so you're waiting to get paid. You've done the work. You may do net 30. You may invoice um, a customer, do net 30. I remember when uh, we had contracts we got government contracts with the county of wayne so after you do a service they don't pay you right then it's like net 30 they pay you in 30 days you wait for the check in the mail okay so uh it may be a situation where you've done the work and it's net 30 net 60 especially if especially if you're dealing with government agencies okay they may pay in 30 days may pay in 60 days god forbid they pay in 90 days some of our businesses can't wait 90 days to get paid all right but you have a lot of uh incoming cash tied up in, in account receivables you're waiting to get paid okay stocking too much inventory is another way cash flow is disrupted because you oftentimes you have to pay for that uh you may have to pay for the products in advance now if you have a revolving credit account with uh a company and it's like net 30 and they'll they'll, they'll front you they'll give you the product today you pay them in 30 days you have you have a line of credit with a particular company things like that because i've experienced that before previously uh it's a little different but you got to pay for that stuff at some time you got to pay for that inventory at some time okay so a lot of times and especially entrepreneurs are like the ultimate optimist entrepreneurs are the ultimate optimist so if you have uh a customer who comes in or a customer who orders one product for you today you start thinking you say, OK, if I can sell it to one person, I can sell it to 10. So you order 10 of them. So now your inventory 
is tied up or your dollars are tied up in this inventory you've ordered 10 of them you may not have sold you may have only sold one of this product in two months or three months but now you have 10 of them and your and your your cash is tied up okay so these are different different things that you you have to navigate um we'll talk about cash flow statements in just a minute one of the reasons why it's important to uh you want to do cash flow statements and, and do cash flow projections a lot of people's businesses they have spikes and valleys peaks and valleys that are seasonal so you may have a business where three months out of the year is booming business is huge where you got to have enough capital to get ready for that season okay and that's why you want to be able to project you got to have enough capital to, to, to have enough product, also have enough staff to be able to deal with be able to, to deal with that peak period of time where you make you the most amount of money. For some businesses, some retailers, it's what we call the golden quarter, no, uh, um, October, November, December, especially in, in retail, big box retailers, things like this. The golden quarter, October, November, and December. For some businesses, that's where they get historically. You know with christmas things like that historically um even with the cyber monday small business saturday things like that you 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 you'll combine what you do in revenue online with what you do in person brick and mortar store or you may do um you may uh have a vendor booth at different events and expos and things like that during that golden quarter right so you have to have enough inventory on hand to be able to meet that spike in demand to take advantage of it that's why you want to do these projections so stocking too much inventory is another way uh cash flow is disrupted okay now going back a few minutes ago when i was talking about uh don't quit your day job one two i don't, I don't disrespect people and talk about people uh working a nine to five job and say oh they're working on the plantation things like that i've studied what slavery is that's not slavery Here's something else. This is real life. Been there, done that. This is real life example. When you are living a life and you're an entrepreneur, you may have to go to some of those people that work for corporations, that work for the white man. You may have to go to them and get a short term loan because you can't get one from a bank. Or you don't have time to go through the the application process and stuff like that been there we had to we had to do that when i was managing a company we had a government contract we we had we had to go to somebody that i knew and we got a short-term loan so that we could float the business and be able to provide the service and pay our employees until we got the first check from from the from the, uh, from the government from the city that's real talk okay so they were able to tap into their 401k plan get some money so we can float this project that we're doing because we didn't have enough time to wait on the bank loan this is what i'm saying i don't i don't speak negatively about people that that work i don't care if you work for white corporations whatever get that money that's money that they can help black owned businesses stay in business with the other thing and this is another way to look at it because i'm once again my degree is in business administration this is one of the documentaries i'm in the black friday series from director rick mathis which deals with economic empowerment leaving a legacy building the legacy but it deals with economic empowerment things like this and i brought a historical aspect i talked about economic empowerment and entrepreneurship because i have experience in that and my degrees in that but I also brought a historical perspective to it that was some history because i'm a historian When we talk about General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, things like this, right? And these are billion dollar companies. And we talk about uh, African Americans working, working in these companies. Oh, you should quit that job and go start a business. Okay, you should quit that job and go start a business, blah, 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 right? Where do these corporations get this money from? Don't African Americans spend money with McDonald's? I'm not saying you should spend money with McDonald's, but don't they spend money with McDonald's and Apple and General Motors and Ford 
and Chrysler and Amazon, okay, uh, Google, Macy's. Don't they spend money with Dell Computers, Hewlett Packard? Don't they spend money with? Don't we spend money with those companies? So what you're saying is, is we're going to spend money with these corporations, Facebook, Twitter, all these corporations. We're going to spend money with these corporations. We have a $1.3 trillion economy. You're saying we're going to spend money with these corporations, create all these fantastic jobs for white people so they can pay their mortgages, send their children to college, buy property, buy homes, all this stuff. We're going to create those jobs for white people. And then we ain't going to take advantage of what we created and take advantage of the stock purchase plan, the 401k plan, the health benefits, the dental, the vision, the health, tuition reimbursement, all that stuff. And we paid for that. And we're not going to take advantage of that. We're just going to go build our own businesses. Why wouldn't you do both? Why wouldn't you? All those jobs, we paid for them. We should have, we, we should fill positions on all different levels. From, from the board of directors, the General Motors, down to the assembly line. We pay for those jobs. So we're going to create jobs for white people and create all these fantastic opportunities and not take advantage of what we created? That don't even make sense. My degree is in business. We ain't studying no dumbass nonsense like that. No, you take that money and that, and that steady paycheck and you use that to invest in black-owned businesses and create them. Don't quit your day job. That's just nonsense. That's the type of BS people running you when they're trying to sell you entrepreneurship classes. So they don't have to get a job next to you in your cubicle. That's the type of BS they run on you. Hell no. You better take advantage of all those jobs. And the other thing is you need people inside those corporations to wire you up when contracts come. How do I know? Because been there, done that. You need people inside because all, all those corporations, they give up hundreds of millions of dollars, millions of tens of millions of dollars, or hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts each year you need people on the inside to let you know what these contracts are because that's how businesses get business through contracts with companies and contracts with the federal government federal government state government county city how do i know because i've done that i'm talking about experience i ain't talking about what i read in the book i'm talking about from experience you need people on the inside to wire you up because that's what white people do. That's how they know when contracts are coming. That's how they know when opportunities are coming. We need the same thing. And at the same time, our dollars are paying for those opportunities. When you have, see, this is what a lot of people don't understand with, with uh, business. People say, we need our own businesses. We need our own businesses. Okay? How do businesses survive? We went from 1.7 million African-American owned businesses in 2012, coming from the Census Bureau. But 2012, 2000, about 2018, 2020, it had grown to 4 million black owned businesses. Before COVID, it had grown to 4 million black owned businesses, 2018, 2019. When you look at the revenue, the revenue was cut in half. It went from something like $100,000, $112,000 on average a year per Black-owned business when it's 1.7 million businesses down to something like $56,000 a year average revenue when it's 4 million businesses. And this is what I, I was explaining to all these economic gurus and economic empowerment people saying we need more businesses. We need more businesses. I said, no, we need to support our businesses more. Just having more businesses, hell, they're just fighting over the same amount of money. You cut the revenue in half. And then as of April 20, 2020, we lost 41% of our businesses because of COVID. Just nonsense. But we need to go, one of the things we have to do is renegotiate our, our relationship with corporate America. Because we got to put pressure on them, not for donations, but investments and get more of those government, get more of those corporate contracts. Whether you talk, where you're talking about transportation, where you talk about advertising janitorial services another thing is they have to put a greater percentage of their dollars in black owned banks as well which increases the amount of money that our banks have to lend uh and and lend to start businesses on property etc 
but that's a whole nother presentation okay now let's continue because i'm almost done uh so we're talking about cash flow so what is cash flow okay cash flow refers to the net balance of cash moving into and out of a business at a specific point in time at a specific point in time uh cash is cash is constantly moving into and out of a business for example when a retailer uh purchases inventory money flows out of the business money flows out of the business toward its suppliers been there done that know what that feels like when the same retailer sells something from its inventory cash flows into the business from its customers cash flows into the business from its customers so paying workers or utility bills represents cash flowing out of the business towards its debtors while collecting a monthly installment or a customer purchase finance or or uh while collecting a monthly installment on on a customer purchase financed 18, 18 months ago shows shows cash flowing into the business now you have positive cash flow and negative cash flow what's the difference positive cash flow means a company has more money moving into the company than out of the company for a specific period of time a month a quarter a year etc positive cash flow negative cash flow means uh it indicates a company has more money moving out of the company than into it and this can cause huge problems that's why you want to do these projections okay and and you could do cash flow statements that help you project especially the peaks and valleys especially the, the the low uh period of time when you have less revenue coming in and peaks of time when you have high revenue coming in or you have high cash expenditures because you have to buy more inventory your your uh business may be impacted on a seasonal basis all right now cash flow is typically reported in the cash flow statement a financial document designed to provide a detailed analysis of what happened to a business's cash during a specified period of time the document shows different areas where a company used or receive cash and reconciles the beginning and ending cash balances all right so um harvard harvard's business school online has some good information they have a good piece on cash flow versus profit what's the difference cash flow versus profit wants to, what's the difference at hbs.edu that's harvard business school's um website okay they have a good they have a good uh it's 11 page document there cash flow versus profit what's the difference now number 13 number 13 of 17 reasons why 80 percent of, Af of african-american owned businesses fail in the first 18 months don't make these mistakes and african-american owned business owners post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast email us at ahn show at africanhistorynetwork.com ahn show at africanhistorynetwork.com we'll let you know how you can advertise with the african history network and on the african history network show failure to adapt to changes in the business environment failure to adapt to changes in the, the business environment so if you remain too rigid your business will be just another data point or statistic boosting the startup failure rate it's worth knowing that the need you're fulfilling now may not always be there as i said a few minutes ago okay um your business your service your product has to fulfill a need one two there's a time to get in the business and time to get out just because they needed something in 1950 1960 doesn't mean they need it in 2022. a more contemporary example is blockbuster video how many people remember blockbuster video and going to blockbuster video and getting the the i remember when they were video cassettes first then dvds 
and they had the popcorn there also blockbuster block, block, blockbuster was everywhere the competitor to blockbuster video was hollywood video right hollywood video blockbuster survived the hollywood video war they didn't survive the netflix war blockbuster video stores uh uh back in the 1980s and 1990s was the walmart of video stores when the internet started gaining popularity popularity walmart uh, uh blockbuster failed to keep up with the times there was a change in the environment and actually when you study netflix which is what took walmart out i mean uh, blockbuster out netflix took blockbuster out netflix started the guy who started netflix he started netflix because he returned a blockbuster video back and it was it was uh, a bunch of late fees or something like that right this is how netflix started as a competitor to blockbuster and netflix has just exploded over the years Netflix has exploded over the years to creating original content and being a huge, uh, being a huge Goliath when it comes to streaming services, et cetera. We know they've had recent uh, uh, shedding of subscribers. It's going to happen sooner or later. But Netflix is still alive. Blockbuster, where's Blockbuster? Okay, I think there's either, I think it's like maybe one Blockbuster store left in America or something like that. It's blockbuster didn't survive the war netflix did so blockbuster failed to keep up with the times and the change in the environment and change in technology the the the, the change in the way that the entertainment is delivered and blockbuster told themselves the internet was just a fad when blockbuster changed i remember when blockbuster changed after netflix came out netflix was gaining market share blockbuster changed their strategy and they started offering uh the monthly stream the monthly service where you could uh stream the video stream the movies like netflix but it was too late they blockbuster made the change too late and netflix had gained too much market share okay and netflix netflix started out with dvds then netflix switched to dvds and streaming blockbuster tried to do it and it was too late for blockbuster they had lost too much market share and people got upset you know people got upset also with the late fees with blockbuster things like that okay so was blockbuster video wrong netflix and redbox 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 was also a competitor as well but um Redbox was similar to Netflix, where they had the DVDs that you mailed, um, and then uh, I think they went to streaming service also. But Netflix won that war. Netflix won that war. Don't be another blockbuster. Pay attention to the market to know when you may need to modify your business plan. Staying on top of key trends will give you ample time to alter your business strategy so that you can remain successful. As I said, Kenny, Kenny Rogers, the gambler, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away and know when to run. OK, there's a time to get into a business and there's a time to get out of a business. We love legacy businesses and family businesses, but just because, your you know, your grandfather moved from Mississippi up to Chicago or Detroit or Cincinnati and started a business. You know 70 years ago or what have you and it's a family business third generation family business or second generation family business that doesn't mean the business should still be in existence in 2022 it may not be relevant you may not have enough customers to sustain the business you may be offering something that's obsolete so you have to know when to get in the business and get out of the business and understand the business environment you have to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Don't be a blockbuster. Because Blockbuster got killed by Netflix. Now people see they because they remember they used to say, let's make it a blockbuster night. Now they say now they say Netflix and chill. Because because they used to say, let's make it a blockbuster night. So that meant go to Blockbuster, right? Pick out your video, get the popcorn, get some Coca-Cola or something like that. Go watch the videos. 
You remember on the, you remember on the Blockbuster when when they had uh, uh, when they had videotapes at Blockbuster? They had on the on the case, be kind, rewind, right? <laughs> remember all that? So going to Blockbuster was an experience, right? Make it a Blockbuster night. Now they say then then Netflix kill blockbuster and they said netflix and chill let's make it a netflix night night number 14 17 reasons why 80 percent of african-american owned businesses go out of business in the first 18 months unsustainable growth unsustainable growth when a business has an established customer base and a good cash flow expansion makes sense when the business has a good customer and established customer base and good cash flow expansion makes sense a common mistake most african-american owned businesses make is taking on more business than they can handle because they think more is better taking on more business than they can handle you got to be able to manage all that there's a learning curve when you take on uh when, especially when you bring bring on new products you got to learn the new products troubleshoot problems customers may have new services things like that there's a learning curve involved for the owner for the employees okay a common mistake most african-american owned businesses make is taking on more business than they can handle businesses should treat expansions as though they are starting all over again treat expansions as though they are starting all over again when businesses expand too fast and don't take the same care with planning research and strategy the financial drain of the failing businesses can sink the whole enterprise the financial strain of the failing businesses can sink the whole sink the whole enterprise now excuse me one of the things that we look at now i remember when i was selling radio ads like 22 years ago in Detroit there was a there was a phrase that I learned in the radio industry is it's called fire your client fire your client because there may there may be a business that you're in when your inventory is uh finite okay when your inventory is finite and what I mean by that is um say uh you you may have a radio station you may be you may have an internet tv station or something like that you may have a podcast or, or whatever if you're selling advertising your inventory is limited you don't have an unlimited amount of inventory and and one of the things that they had to do is to meet your monthly projections sales projections or it may be a situation where um it may be some type of service that you offer and you have different uh levels of pricing that you offer some customers that you don't get a lot of money from you may have to stop servicing those customers because they take up so much time and focus on other customers who who uh produce what we may call um uh, rev, um sales per ticket or revenue per ticket more customers that that bring in more dollars for you that produce more revenue for you for you to meet your monthly goals this is something i learned in radio because some um in the radio in the radio game you have limited inventory each month to sell ads you don't have an unlimited amount of inventory okay you don't have an unlimited amount of inventory so if you have people that just want to spend a thousand dollars a month on ads and they're taking up ad space and you got other customers that want to spend ten thousand twenty dollars ten thousand twenty thousand dollars on ads you may have to reduce how many of those people and it could be 10 20 30 customers but you don't have the ad space for your big clients because these people over here are taking up that ad space and generating little uh, generating a much smaller amount of revenue and it makes it harder for you to meet your monthly or quarterly sales goals 
So you'll learn about the 80 20 rule. If you don't know about the 80 20 rule, I don't, when it comes, especially when it comes to sales and business, we'll talk about the 80 20 rule in just a minute. If you don't, if you don't know about the 80 20 rule, I'm not sure what you're doing or if you've taken the entrepreneur, entrepreneurship class before, but uh, especially in sales, because I have a strong background in sales. And I used to read a lot of books on sales and uh, listen to books on tape from people like Tom Hopkins and Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy, all the sales gurus, Steve Schiffman. And Steve Schiffman has information on cold calling, things like this. You'll learn about the 80-20 the rule. And then Steve and Stephen Covey, um, seven habits of highly, uh, highly effective people, things like this. So unsustainable growth. Businesses should treat expansions as though they are starting all over again. Slow and steady growth is the way to go. It helps to take the time to understand the markets and areas you'll be reaching if you're expanding your business's reach, if you're expanding your business's reach. Now, you have to develop systems for each product, most likely each product and service. You have to develop systems. There's a learning curve when it comes to understanding the product, how it works, how to explain it to the customer. Um, we used to talk about the difference between features and benefits. When I was in retail sales, we used to talk about the difference between features and benefits. A feature is what a product does. A benefit is what it does for you, how it helps you. OK, features and benefits, understanding the difference. So when I used to manage a radio shack, right, there were certifications tests that the employees and the managers had to take on on each product category to understand how to sell a product category, how to answer customers questions how to solve how to use that product to solve problems we had to be educated on that that's a learning curve okay so when you start taking on more products and services in your business there's a learning curve involved in that okay and then also especially when you're dealing with technology how to solve problems that customers may have with that product or service especially if it's something where you have to deal with a vendor another vendor um and you have to call the vendor and work a problem out for a customer so that you so you're gonna have to have relationships with that vendor understand how to navigate throughout th throughout that system it's a different world okay so those are some of the growing pains when it comes to growth and taking on more services and products number 15 poor management skills poor management skills management does have an effect on your bottom line business management management does have an effect on your bottom line managing a business takes distinct skills including purchasing skills marketing finance creating a cohesive team if you have more than one person uh but you may contract work out also okay creating a cohesive team and hiring and managing employees business owners without these skills and their failure to recognize the importance of the uh, very uh, of these very skills of the very skills they lack are reasons why many black owned businesses go out of business. OK, poor business management skills. Once again, you're the chief everything officer. Now, you may have to delegate certain responsibilities, but you're responsible for all of this. uh some business some business owners fall into the overconfidence trap and would rather struggle with a certain aspect of running a business than educate themselves or outsource work to professionals number 16 time management skills this is huge especially for people who work from home this is huge time management skills because you know if you don't get up to 10 or 11 and then next thing you know is two or three o'clock or four o'clock or five o'clock and you try to do some work from five to nine but then you're doing this and that and watching tv and all this stuff you got to have superior time management skills time is money spend it wisely time is money Seriously, you learn that in sales and in business. 
what well, time is something that you don't get back. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, 168 hours in a week. Time is something that you cannot get back. So invest it and spend it wisely. Don't waste 